Meet Jimmy, Sherry, Kate, and Alan. Today, these friends are going to a pharmaceutical drug party. Jimmy has chosen to take one large white pill and one red pill. Fortunately for Jimmy, his choice results in blurred vision and difficulty breathing. Sherry has chosen to take one small white pill and one pink pill. Luckily for Sherry, her choice results in sharp muscle pain and mild hallucinations. Kate has chosen to take one pink pill and one round red pill. Luckily for Kate, her choice results in an upset stomach and vomiting. Alan has chosen to take one red pill and one large white pill. Fortunately for Alan? Alan? Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Edgar. This video is made to give you the truth about prescription drug use and abuse. You will hear from a local ER doctor of the dangers of using prescription drugs. You will also hear from a family court judge about the law and how it affects you. And lastly, you will hear one local family story about their son named Austin. Much of what you hear about drugs actually comes from the people that sell them. Do you think they're telling you the truth? Don't be fooled. Know the facts. A lot of people think that prescription drugs are safe because they're prescribed by a doctor. Actually, there are very serious health risks to taking prescription drugs. I just wanted to send some messages to you guys that I, I think are really important. I work in the emergency department. I have been doing this for a lot of years and I've seen a lot of kids come in that have been in really bad situations. When you go to those parties and you take a handful of pills or even one pill, those can be fatal. You have absolutely no idea what that pill is and what it can do to your body. Many pills look the same and it's easy to think you're taking one, but in fact you're taking another. It's extremely dangerous to take something that wasn't prescribed to you by your own doctor. We all look different, so it makes sense that our bodies would react differently to different drugs. Always remember, prescription drugs are only safe for the person they're prescribed to. When a prescription is prescribed for a certain individual, um, it does specific things to your body. And when your body doesn't have a particular problem that that pill is being used for, when you, when you take that pill, it can cause really adverse effects. It can drop your blood pressure, it can stop your heartbeat, it can drop your sugar, it can cause you to have seizures, it can cause you to have hallucinations, it can do all sorts of things. And you have no idea what that pill is. Many kids think that mixing alcohol and prescription drugs are safe. The second most serious thing that you can do when you do that is to drink alcohol with it. So what we've learned so far is never take a pill that isn't yours and don't mix with alcohol. It's like putting two bad things in a room. It's never going to come out good. Even if it's your prescription, don't mix with alcohol. It is not meant to be mixed because it could just do the opposite. It can even lead to death. For those of you students who have health problems of your own, maybe you don't share those with your friends. You can die very easily because you're taking medication that can interfere with your current medications. If you're at a party and you have a friend, or even if it's not a close friend of yours, don't hesitate to take care of that person. And they can freeze overnight in, in, this, in these cold winter months or it's too hot in the summertime. They can vomit if they're laying on their back. They can aspirate and that means that the vomit goes into their lungs and um, stops their breathing. Um, so if you just make the right choice, yes, you might be in trouble for a little bit, but believe me, that small amount is far better than living with the guilt of a friend who's dead. Selling prescription drugs is not the same as selling illegal drugs, is it? 
Many kids may think that using prescription drugs is not illegal because it's prescribed by a doctor. It's absolutely illegal for anyone, including children, to use medically prescribed drugs, either for sale or personal use. They would be brought to the Jan Evans Juvenile Detention Center. They would appear in front of a judge uh, to determine whether or not they should be detained at our juvenile detention facility because they may be an ongoing danger to the safety of our community or because they may be an ongoing danger to themselves. I got some prescription drugs called Adderall from one of my friends to give to my other friends so then he could study and work harder and focus during class. And so I gave it to him and then um, someone told and we got caught and it was horrible. I mean, he's one of my amazing best friends and I can even think about if anything would have happened to him, I don't know what I would have done. And now thinking, wow, this is illegal. I mean, I could go to jail right now. So that was a huge like wake up call, thinking, wow, I could leave everyone that I care about. It was just really shocking. It was horrible that I know that I could have died and I put a lot of lives on the line just for my stupid actions. Heath Ledger and Michael Jackson. What do these two entertainers have in common? They both died of an overdose of prescription drugs. Do you want to end up like Heath and Michael? My son Austin's 15 years old. He was um, a big kid, six foot one, 200 pounds, a really good looking kid. Um, always had a lot of girlfriends, a lot of girls calling constantly. He was a real cut up. He liked to constantly make you laugh. Loved music, loved all types of music. He played drums, he was really, really good. And, and I miss all that noise in the house. At the time it was so annoying for him to play drums late into the night and come home and hold your ears and make dinner, but I miss that. I would give anything to have that back. You know, he was just a, he was a great kid. He would fish from morning till night. I mean, that's what he would do, his passion was just seeing how many he could catch. And when he would catch it, he would try to eat it sushi style. And it was <laughs> not very good. <laughs> One of my, my most precious memories of Austin was <laughs> the summer before he died. We had gone camping out at Lahontan and we couldn't get the kid out of the water because he just loved to fish. We couldn't even get him out to eat dinner and he loved to eat. He would eat it out of house and home. <laughs> and it was late at night, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night, and we were all a bunch of friends sitting around the fire, and I look out in the water, and there's a full moon up ahead, and Austin's in his boat with his fishing pole, just fishing. I'll never <laughs> forget that image. The morning that Austin died, I was up early doing laundry, and um, I took a load into his room at 7.25. I remember the time, like it was yesterday. And I looked over on his bed, and he was lying on top of his bed in his boxer shorts in his regular sleeping position, which was with his hands on his chest and his legs to his side. But he didn't look peaceful because his face, his face was white. There was black all the way around his eyes. And there was a white bone coming out of his mouth, so I knew something was really, really wrong. So I remember jumping on him, and I grabbed him and shook him and tried to wake him up, and he was really cold. But he was warm around his chest. So I thought that maybe there was a chance he was still alive. And I started screaming. And I remember Dave and Angela 
Austin's sister came running into the room. And all I remember from that point forward was just screaming at the top of my lungs. And now I know what the term wailing means because it wasn't yelling, it wasn't screaming, it was wailing. <laughs> and it was kind of like I was having an outer body experience because I could see myself. I could see the room. I could see Davy and Angela struggling to do CPR. <laughs> and there was nothing I could do. And I ran out into the street. It was January, it was cold. I was barefoot, I was in my pajamas. And I was just screaming in the street, waiting for the ambulance to come. And, and the rest of the day, I don't remember much, but I remember watching the clock. I remember at 10.25, thinking it's been three hours since I found my son dead. 11.25, it's been four hours. Since then, I've counted days and weeks, and now we're counting months. And hopefully, we'll start counting years soon. One of the things that the coroner said was that Austin was a naive user. It was probably the first time he had ever taken it. It was probably two pills, two 10 milligram pills. He just made a, a very bad mistake and it cost him his life. You now know the facts, the laws, and the health risks from taking prescription drugs. Now it's your choice. Break, Break free, free, live free. free.